This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2578, Moments Can't Be Captured, by David Kane of raptitude.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Welcome back to our Sunday bonus episode, where I share an article with you from a different podcast in our network. Today's episode is coming from our very first podcast, Optimal Living Daily. You can find that show wherever you're listening to this. And please do follow or subscribe to the show to get new episodes every day. That helps keep this show going. So with that, here's Justin with The Post as we optimize your life. Moments Can't Be Captured by David Kane of raptitude.com. By six o'clock on a Sunday night, the streets of Inramir were deserted. It was early fall, the middle of dead season for a skier's town, and I was trotting down to the highway to hitchhike back up the mountain to the resort where I lived and worked. It had rained earlier, and the damp streets were glowing with one final hour of sun before it ducked behind the mountains. I'd spent the day in town, alone, on what was as much a photo-taking excursion as a grocery run. Walking along a silent residential street, I passed an overgrown picket fence, peered nosily into the adjacent yard, and saw something that made me stop. Not six feet away, a female deer was dining on someone's flower bed. Now deer are common in British Columbia, and strangely unafraid of people in the town of Invermere, but it's rare to ever be this close to one. It must have known I was there, but it wasn't alarmed by my presence. I just stared. As if to invite me to join her, she lifted her head from the flower bed and looked at me with a wilted purple flower hanging from her mouth. And my camera was already right in my hand. I paused and suddenly felt an anxiety swell inside me. To even just carefully flip on my camera and raise it for a photo might scare it away. But it was such a priceless photo op. I didn't know what to do, so I continued to not move a muscle. While I was stressing about how to get this photo, she cocked her head and looked at me curiously, like I was just some strange, awkward deer. I just about burst out laughing. At this point, I decided there would be no picture and suddenly felt a tremendous relief. I would just watch and not worry about trying to take this moment with me. She ducked her head back in the mess of frost-ravaged flowers and continued chewing for a moment as I looked on, probably smiling, so pleased to know that this spectacle was just for me. After a while, she walked away, unhurriedly, but not aimlessly, much more akin to a person than a deer. I recovered from my trance and headed down to thumb a ride before the sun was gone. A jeep quickly pulled over and I jumped in. I thought about the deer all the way up, but I didn't mention it to the driver. He was an easygoing maintenance guy up on the resort. We talked about football. When I arrived home, I ended up not telling my friends either. It was over. It was just a story now. They'd never be able to appreciate how magical it was. They would probably say, oh, cool. And somehow the whole experience would become that much less cool to me. So I kept the experience all to myself. Now that I think of it, I never actually ever told anybody. And that was seven years ago. There was just something so fulfilling about not trying to cash in on it by telling the story. I'm only relating it now because it illustrates the point I want to make so well. The urge to own moments. I've had that same kind of camera anxiety many times since. And I know I'm not the only one. I've heard other people talk about this. They see something beautiful or touching, maybe a sunset, an animal or a tearful speech, and the urge arises to capture it with a camera. Look what's happening, don't let it get away. Sometimes we want so badly to capture a remarkable moment in progress that we introduce an unnecessary anxiousness to our experience of it. Anxiety is a dead giveaway that we are not entirely present for it because half our attention is in later mode. I need to save this. I need to have it for later, not just now. Many times I haven't been entirely present in these special moments because I'm concerned that I won't get a good shot. I flip the camera on, switch to the right settings, shuffle to the right angle, and hope it's still remarkable by the time I'm ready to take the picture. When I really think about that impulse, it's quite an arrogant one. What I'm really trying to do is own that moment so I can show it off to others or perhaps just indulge in it later whenever I feel like it. I want to steal those bears and archways and waterfalls from BC or Montreal or Mexico and hoard them in my computer as if that would actually make them mine. So many of my photo albums are full of exactly that, dead images of mountains, 
beaches, trees, and buildings that all humbled me when I was actually in their presence, but none of which confer any of that magic through their portraits. Hopefully I enjoyed them in real time before I took my camera out. As I show a series of travel pictures to friends and family, usually most get flipped through without eliciting a comment from anyone. It's just another palm tree or person waving or church steeple, and most albums only get looked at once. Yet at the time, I probably felt like I was somehow immortalizing my experience. Now, I won't knock the remarkable ability good photographers have to communicate volumes with an incredible photograph, but I think capturing a moment is largely a myth. A captured image can invoke torrents of emotion and suggest a touching narrative, but it can't take you back to the moment, especially if you weren't there in the first place. Good pictures do pull all sorts of compelling emotions, opinions, and stories out of our brains, different ones from different viewers, but those are all just projections, assumptions about the moment the picture came from. Some may be appropriate, others completely misplaced. The moment itself was over as soon as it happened. We don't always need souvenirs. How amazing it would be if we could let the experience itself be enough, however long or short it may be, and let go of the need to try and make a possession of it, to let the sun go down when it pleases, to leave the waterfall where we found it, to let the deer slink away into the trees without a trace. Wouldn't that be the ultimate acknowledgement that it was indeed amazing? A former girlfriend was fond of saying in our most blissful moments, I wish we could bottle this. I knew exactly what she meant. It's a lovely thought. Sometimes the moment was just so perfect, you'd be struck with the notion that most of the rest of life couldn't live up to it. It'd be nice to have a little stash of that beauty and bliss for later. On closer examination, that common sentiment is tinged with fear, the fear that the experience will soon be lost. And of course, it always will be. I wanted to bottle it too, but you can't. It flows when it flows, and there's nothing in the world that can contain it. So you'd better really be there when it does. You just listened to the post titled, Moments Can't Be Captured by David Kane of raptitude.com. It's no secret how important e-learning solutions are in today's dynamic business landscape. If you want any chance at keeping up, it'll be necessary for you to have innovative tools that transform workplace learning into a seamless process. That's where our sponsor Articulate comes in. Used by over 120,000 plus organizations, Articulate is a software company that specializes in e-learning tools. Their suite enables easy creation of engaging online courses, catering to individuals and organizations, delivering effective online learning experiences and training to their workplace. Articulate makes it easy and efficient to create engaging digital learning experiences that reach more learners, giving you endless possibilities to create, collaborate on, and distribute stunning and interactive e-learning experiences. So visit articulate.com slash 360 to start a free 30-day trial of Articulate 360. That's articulate.com slash 360 to start a free 30-day trial of Articulate 360. Thank you to David. There was a quote in here that I thought was really good and worth repeating. A captured image can invoke torrents of emotion and suggest a touching narrative, but it can't take you back to the moment especially if you weren't there in the first place. To me, this captures both sides of it. Yes, photographers are amazing. It's a great invention and works of art in some cases. But if that's what we keep focusing on in very important moments of our lives, then what exactly are we doing? Like you said, it's either that we're experiencing the fear of losing that moment forever, or we feel a need to get meaning from it by sharing it with others. And both of those could actually ruin the moment literally by making the deer run away in his example, or just by not taking it in thoroughly enough. And really it completely defeats the purpose of trying to lock it in forever if you're not taking it all in. For me, you'll rarely find me taking a picture. I don't have a photographic memory or anything, but some of those best moments in life, I feel like I can still see them. And I think it helps that not only I feel like I'm seeing glimpses of the memory, but also the actual feeling of it, like the smell, the touch things that don't come with a photograph. So all this to say, it's not a photos are bad argument, but like pretty much everything in life, it's moderation. 
Hopefully we're not always looking to take a photo instead of simply enjoying a great moment. So enjoy the moment, this moment. Thank you for being here and listening every day. That's the only way I've been able to continue doing this. It's by you clicking that follow or subscribe button and coming back to listen. So thank you, it means a lot. I'll be back tomorrow reading to you where your optimal life awaits.